theorem comes from. Okay, let's get into uh, some of these on worksheet 5.4. This is kind of a, just a supplement of the regular podcast that maybe just a, that you may have questions on or um, to help you out a little bit extra here uh, with this section. So I'm on, this is worksheet three, um, 314, and let's just do a couple of these. Um, the first one, number one. Now, first of all, what do we have here? We have a rectangle. So the first thing I would do is I go up to the characteristics, find your sheet here, and uh, look at the characteristics of a rectangle. A rectangle, it has four right angles. It has all those properties of a parallelogram. You know, the opposite angles are equal, opposite sides are equal, and so on. And the, the diagonals are congruent to one another. So in other words, really this first one and the last one are the two main ones. Diagonals are congruent to one another, you have four right angles. So number one, if WY, if WY is 19, what's a ZX? Well, since we know the it's a rectangle, the diagonals are equal to one another, so it's got to be 19. And that's kind of the way we're going with these. Now I'm going to skip a couple of here. I'm going to go down to um, number four. If WY, if this whole diagonal is 3A plus 16, and uh, ZX is 5a plus minus 18, what's a? Well, again, the diagonals are equal to one another, so you solve that for a. Let's take a look at uh, number five. Now, number five, a TWZ, so TWZ is 70. Um, what's TZW? So, in other words, here's, what you, here's how we get this. Now, find TZW. Now, this is, a, this is a rectangle, but also it's a parallelogram. What do you know about the, a parallelogram? The diagonals bisect each other. So in other words, but also the diagonals are equal to one another. This diagonal equals this diagonal, which means really, and since those diagonals bisect each other, these parts are really equal to one another. So now what we have here is this part right here. Notice this is a, is a triangle, right? It's an isosceles triangle, so the opposite, if two sides are equal, the opposite angles are equal, so it's 70. Now you can find WTZ, knowing the fact that the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. All right, let's take a look on the, uh, the other side of this and do a couple, in, one or two in each group. Just to... Now on 6 through 11, you've got a rhombus. Now what's a rhombus have? Four equal sides. It has the properties of a parallelogram. The diagonals are perpendicular, and the diagonals bisect its angles. So, for example, number six, if AB is 13, uh, what's AB? Well, uh, the, you have four congruent sides, so it has to be 13. Those are some of the basic ones. Use your, here's your uh, notes here and your sheet here to do these. Um, let's go down to number 10. Now, number 10, it says if angle 1, if angle 1 is 5x, so we're talking about angle 1 there, and that's 5x uh, plus 18. And angle 5, this angle, is 3x minus 8. It wants you to figure out what x is. All right, now, what you can do here is, let's see, it's a rhombus, right? Um, let's see, the diagonals are bisected. So in other words, I know that angle 5 and angle 4 are the same. I know angle 1 and angle 2 are the same. Now, how can I use that uh, fact to uh, figure this out? Um, let's see, what else do I know about a rhombus? The diagonals are perpendicular. So I know that this angle right there is 90 degrees. So let's see here. In this triangle right here, if this angle right here is 90 degrees, what's 2 and 4 have to add up? 90 degrees. So in other words, 1, angle 2 is the same as angle 1, right? Angle 4 is the same thing as angle 5. So what do we know about angle 2 and angle 4? They have to add up to 90. So in number 10, the 5x plus 18 plus the 3x minus 8 have to add up to 90, and you solve it for x. Now. To save you a little time and so you don't have to listen to me all the time, 
Number 11 is virtually the same type of problem. All right? So just work with those a little bit. All right, let's go down to uh, 12 through 16, a square. Now, let's look at the properties of a square. It has four right angles and four equal sides. As always, it has the properties of a parallelogram. Uh, the diagonals are both congruent to one another and they're perpendicular and has diagonals that bisect its angle. So in other words, a square has a lot of the properties of everything above. Uh, let's do a basic one, number 12. If MJ is 12, what's ML? Well, it's a square. All sides are equal, so it's got to be 12. What's LK? It's got to be 12, right? So that's just kind of the basics of, of the square itself. Now let's go down to, uh, oh, let's try number 14. If JL is 18, let's see, JL, this whole diagonal is 18. And MK, what's MK? Well, MK, it's got to be, the diagonals are both congruent and perpendicular. So MK has to be 18. What's JX? Well, the diagonals also bisect each other since it's a parallelogram, so it's got to be 9. And what's XK? Uh, same thing, it's got to be 9. Now, number 16, the numbered angles are all congruent. So the numbered angles are all congruent, and each angle has a measure of what? Now, since it's a square, this angle right here is a 90-degree angle. But those angles are cut into... Um, we're talking about the numbered angle. So what is each of those, what's this whole angle cut into? Two equal parts, because the diagonals bisect its angle. So you have two 45 degree angles. So what are the numbered angles? They're all 45. All right, 17 through uh, 21. Now we're using this here. So let's take a look at, uh, oh, what was the one that somebody asked uh, about earlier? Um, well, let's start with 17. If ST is 8, what's QS? Well, they're telling you that QS is a median. This is a median. It's hitting the midpoint of the opposite side. What is this side? It's a hypotenuse. Now, what do you know about the hypotenuse in a right triangle? If, if uh, you've got the midpoint of the hypotenuse, this part is the same distance as this part, which is the same distance as that part. So if ST is 8, then QS is 8. And that's kind of how these are working. Let's go down to uh, number 20. And this will be the last one that I go through. Number 20, if the measure of angle T equals 65, if the measure of angle T is 65, then um, the measure of angle RQS. Now, let's see, this is a midpoint, right? So we know that this equals this. So notice that we have an isosceles triangle. If two sides are equal, the opposite angles are equal. Well, now can I figure out what this angle is? Yep, because they add up to 90. 65 plus what is 90? And let's see, 75, 85, 25? So RQS would be 25 degrees. And that's how these are working. Now, on Monday, uh, you will hand in this assignment. Um, I've already gone over some of these for you. You're just going to hand this one in. But the rest of the week, you're going to check the worksheet first and then listen to any of the missed problems that you had um, on, on those key, key, uh, key pots that, that I talked to you that you, you really need to use and listen to. Okay? So, um, really uh, take advantage of those and, and uh, you know, ask questions of one another also to help each other out.